Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. For this video, I'm going to be showing you how to disassemble a Nintendo Switch. So here we have a Nintendo Switch that was purchased in December of 2019 and is no longer functional. It was constantly having orange screen, red screen issues where you'd be using it and it would just stop functioning and you'd have to hold down the power button on the top to reset the unit. So this, the unit is out of warranty. There's no point in sending it back to Nintendo to be fixed, especially with the newer units coming out soon with the OLED screens. This is the spare. So I figured I would use it to show you guys the proper way to disassemble this device. So as you can see, the device no longer functions. It doesn't turn on, doesn't do anything. I tried charging it. Again, it's just, I believe the CPU or the board in it is just failed. So as you can see, we have the Nintendo Switch, the Joy-Cons I kept because they are still functional. There are many screws that hold this device together. There are four screws on the back of the case here in the top corner. These are special tri-point screws that you need a certain size and shaped tool to remove that are readily available. There is a micro SD card here, which I'm just going to pop out. I'm gonna keep this because it can be used for other devices. And you can see on the sides here, there are one, two, three, four, five on each side screws. These all need to be removed so that the unit can be disassembled. So let's get started. What I recommend is you use a contrasting piece of material, paper, whatever you have so that you can see the screws if you drop them. They make special mats and stuff like that for this. In my case, I just use a piece of computer paper. What I have here is a special kit that is used to disassemble computer equipment. It's essentially the same principle for consoles. It has all different types of heads and sizes. They have the tri-points, which are on the top, your Phillips head, flat heads, sockets. There's a magnetizer and a demagnetizer prying tools, suction, there's even a pair of tweezers, and the screwdriver, and this over here is a SIM card removal tool, which is great for phones that have SIM cards. These are readily available. You don't have to spend a lot of money on them. I spent $13 on this at Walmart. I don't even know how long ago. It works perfectly. So, I'm gonna put that aside for now until we are ready. So I'm ready to start taking apart the unit. What I recommend you do if you are going to keep the unit and utilize it again after opening it is to put a separate piece of paper on the side here to put all your screws on in an organized fashion. Again, they make special holders. I don't use any of that stuff. I just put a piece of paper down I sometimes will put circles on it to put the screws in. So let's get started. So we're gonna take our screwdriver and the first thing we're gonna need is a Y000 or triple zero head or a double zero, either one work. And the Y stands for tri-point because you have to take out the tri-point screws that are in there. So they're all on the top and bottom around. Now these are a little difficult to get out I've noticed you have to kind of force them pretty hard and you can see here they are. There's four of these. Now, Nintendo, Sony, Microsoft, they all love using iPhones, Apple. They all love using screws that are custom to make it more difficult to open the units. Again, just any electronic repair kit will include 90% of the heads you need to take these out. Okay, so that's it for the specialized tool, the tri-tip. We basically just need a Phillips head at this point. So a uh, double zero Phillips head is usually pretty good, which is just obviously nothing special here. I'm gonna start by taking out the screw in the bottom. Just obviously 
you have to back each one out, nothing too crazy. These are all very small screws and they are very easy to lose. And they also love to fight. These are, I've noticed with the switch, they are very tightly installed. So sometimes you have to push pretty hard. I'm gonna switch to a triple zero for this one. I don't know why it's fighting me. We go as you can see the screw just fell out now for these reposition a little bit here these are just your standard phillips head like i said you want to make sure that these are in pretty tight because these are what hold the joy cons on and so they are installed pretty tightly from the factory and do require a bit of force to get going Again, there's uh, five of these on each side. And the you wanna be careful when you're going to disassemble a Nintendo Switch because the Joy-Con side can fall off and the cable can disconnect. And the cable can be a pain to put back on when you are going to reassemble the unit. But in my case, I don't care. So we've got a little bit of a fighting here. We're just gonna back this camera up a little bit. So we're just gonna keep backing these screws out. That one was a little tight. So I've disassembled a couple of these units for people in the past. I used to uh, do hardware, IT hardware repair for a living and sometimes you'd come across just a random switch or uh, some console games needed fixing. Um, you don't get a whole lot of them because they're mostly done by the manufacturer or those repair services that you see in malls and whatnot. But in this case, I uh, have done a couple of these. The When the original switches were made, the SIM card trip used to pop out and get stuck because people would push on it too hard. I'll show you why that is once we get it open. So we just continue to take these out. Got one more here. Okay, so let's uh, remove all these screws. So again, we want to hang on to the screws if you're gonna reassemble this. I am not, so I'm not concerned about where the screws are. Okay, so we've got our switch almost disassembled. You can see that the Joy-Cons are hanging. We're going to flip it over and the back cover should be ready to pop off. I just want to do a check because you don't want to force it. So let's pop her off and see what happens. Sometimes there's a bit of fighting. You have to kind of... Oh, I apologize. Here's what I forgot. There is a little baby screw right underneath the micro SD card. Now this is a very tiny screw. You probably can't, you can barely see it. That will hold the cover on, believe it or not. So there we go. We have removed the back cover. Really nothing to this. You can see where the dust imprints are from the airflow. So we're gonna put this aside. Now on the cover, there are more screws holding the unit, the back cover on. This is just a protective cover and assists with heat dissipation. So we've got one, two, three, four, five. So we need to take all these screws out. I'll start in the center and just work my way out. 
Again, I'm not worried about what these screws are. So we can just go ahead and keep disassembling. You have to be very careful when it comes to these kind of screws because they can fall and they're gone. And you'll spend 20, 30 minutes looking for a screw. And sometimes it takes longer to find that screw than to actually fix the unit that you're repairing. So as you can see, we have removed the screws from the back of the unit. We need to make very careful to take out this screw here because this is what holds the board for the micro SD card on, but it also acts as a holding this metal frame on. So let's pop this up. You'll see there's a bit of pressure. You wanna just kinda pull, and I missed one screw. I Sorry about that. It's so easy to miss these screws, especially if you can't see them. I've always said they should have colored screws, but they don't do that. So. Again, now this cover will pop off. You'll see on the cover, the micro SD card is still attached, but it moves free. On the back here, we have the connector for the micro SD card, and we have some leftover thermal compound. Now, this is pretty hard and crusted, and is what helps assist with heat dissipation from the processor. Now, as you can see, on the board here, we have this little spot, which is where the micro SD card plugs into. It's actually a pretty creative design. The unit, when you put this cover on, it just pushes down into there as long as you have it aligned properly. So you really don't have to worry about finagling it to get fixed. Now, standard rule of thumb when you're working on electronics, the second you can get to the battery, I always recommend disconnecting it because you, static charge can still remain in all the component, integrated components, and you can break them very easily. So let's pop this off. And in our case here, you can see we've got the ribbon cable connected to the Joy-Con charger. So we can just go ahead and pull that out. You basically just, it sticks, it's just a ribbon cable that goes in and it connects to the board. It's very difficult to put back on. So I recommend you don't uh, disconnect unless you absolutely have to. So this is free. And we can pull out the other one. The other one's not so bad because it's right there on the board. But again, we can disconnect it. So as you can see, we've got a battery. Now, this battery is very difficult to get out. It's actually really glued in very well. Um, they don't use the pull tabs or anything like Apple or Android use inside of their mobile devices. This one's actually really glued down. I wish they would just use those pull tabs. Now, my recommendation is when you're going to replace this battery for any reason, don't use glue to hold it down. Just use those 3M double-sided sticky tape with or the tabs that like you would use to hang up pictures and you can just cut the tab to a little notch to hang out. Then you can just pull it out easily. In our case, we're gonna just pry up the battery here. As you can see, it's very difficult. Let me try a little different tool here. Let's see if we can get up underneath it. They use so much glue on these batteries. It's very hard to get it out without damaging the battery. But in our case, again, I'm not overly concerned about that because I'm just disassembling. You can hear the glue prying up. It'll come. Very difficult. They really use, you can see it inside. Maybe, I know you probably can't. They use a lot of glue to hold these guys in. Let's see if we can get up a, a flat head underneath it here. Nintendo, to their credit, really made this difficult. Here we go. Now, as you can see, we've done some pretty considerable damage to the battery to the point that it may not even work after. There we go. So you can see now they use a very strong adhesive. It looks like some sort of tape, but 
Um, I've also seen glue underneath. This stuff is very strong and it makes it very hard to get the battery out. I pretty much bent it to just getting it out. So that's the battery piece. Now the switch has two speakers in it that what you hear the sound through. They are located here and here. Here is the processor underneath here, and here is the fan. So the next thing we'll do is we'll take out the heat sink to show you guys what's underneath it. Now, the heat sinks in these particular models actually work very well. There are videos all over YouTube about people running their switch with the cover off and using a thermal camera to show the heat dissipation. Now, these are very also very difficult to get out because they're not supposed to be really removed by anybody other than Nintendo. So let's try a P200 here. That worked. So usually you can get these screws just out enough and we can pry off the, the cover. So as you can see, the screws are loose. They're, again, they kind of just sit in there. When they fall out, I, you don't have to deal with. Let me see, there we go. We pop that up. Now we have to, we can go ahead and pull this out. They, they basically tape the heat sink down so let me just peel this tape back here, it's stuck. So here are the fins. How it works is the heat is generated from the CPU, works its way up the copper lines, and then out through the fins, and this fan here blows the air upwards. For the rest of this, it's basically just the logic board. There are the various connectors. The wireless card is built onto the board as well, that's what these little, these two wires are for. They act as the antenna for the wireless, which is, the wireless is weak in these. I think it's only, I mean, it's not AC. I think it stops at N, but uh, it's basic for what Nintendo needs. One of the things I never liked about the Nintendo Switch was the, the slow network connectivity. Games take forever to download and stuff like that. The, um, you can go ahead and pry this cover off here. They're kind of hard to get off, but we'll see if I can do it. There we go. So here's the processor, here is the memory. It's all kind of just integrated into one. You can see the sound connections here again, like I showed you. I think the issue with this particular switch is the fact that the CPU was either overheating or it's the logic board, but I'm not, sure if it's overheating because I did find on the back here that the thermal compound was pretty hard, but they double up the thermal compound. As you can see, there's thermal compound on here, there's thermal tape on this side, and thermal compound itself on the CPU. So I'm not suspect that the CPU was the problem. I think the board basically went. The fan was spinning, I know that. There's nothing resisting it. And I was able to see it spinning when the unit still worked. So that's basically it, how to disassemble a Nintendo Switch. Um, it's good to know if you ever need to do repairs. Honestly, the only thing you could probably ever do in it would be the battery. But th that's far and few in between that you, run, that you actually have to do that. Um, usually if the battery fails, they will swell considerably. You'll see them like bulge up. Um, I think this one was just a faulty unit or my children didn't take care of it, but I don't think that was the case because it was giving me issues for a while. So that's it. Um, this is all that's left of a Nintendo Switch. You can go ahead and take out the board if you wanted to, but there's really nothing to see underneath it. Everything's just kind of integrated into one. There are a bunch of screws that hold it down. Up here, you have to take out the uh, headphone connector. 
at the top and the uh, you can take out the docking port and the charging port by just by removing these two screws here. One thing I did like is that Nintendo made this pretty sturdy because putting it in and out of a dock, it breaks. It could, you'd think it would break pretty easily, but I've never seen one that broke. Um, you can take the fan out by these two. And uh, all in all, the Nintendo Switch build is okay. Kind of, they cheaped out in some spots to save money, of course, with they sacrificed CPU to save on heat, dissipation, battery life, stuff like that at the consideration of gaming, obviously graphics. That's why these don't support 4K and natively and um, stuff like that. So hopefully the future models get a little bit of a power, better CPU graphics card. Otherwise games are gonna be limited in terms of design for the Nintendo Switch. Now you look at games like Breath of the Wild and say, wow, that's really nice graphics. If you compare it to other games on like the Xbox and the PlayStation, it's good, but it's not so good. Um, if they were to bring out Zelda on the Xbox or the PlayStation, your mind would be blown compared to the Switch version. But obviously we know that'll never happen. So um, we'll see what the future holds. I know the new models are gonna have OLED screens and a couple other features. They're gonna integrate a, a gigabit ethernet port into the actual Switch itself. I don't see that ever being used by the majority of people. Um, they don't natively support video streaming from the Switch. So the use of that port you'd have to really not have wireless to want to use it. That's the only reason I could really think of for using that kind of port. But um, we'll see what the future holds for Nintendo. So thank you everyone for watching this video. And now I have a uh, Nintendo Switch that's going to go off to the uh, IT recycling to get turned into something else in the future. Thank you everyone for watching the video. Please like and subscribe and we'll have some new stuff coming soon.